do? And welcome to the Boss Up All Out Podcast, your home for organic debates about Detroit Lions news and rumors. It's your man, Kurt Still. On today's show, we answer the question, who or what can stop the Lions Super Bowl run? But do us a quick favor, like the video and share it with other Lions fans just like yourself. If you're new to the channel and you haven't subscribed yet, or if you keep coming back and you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button, man. We're on our way to 2,500 subscribers. We are just four away at 2496. Now it's time to bring in my co-host for today's show, man. Man, he used to put up them Dukes, man, down there at Jackson, Michigan. Golden Gloves extraordinaire. He coaches kids. He cooks meals, man. It's the Wolver Lion. Who? Coach Mike. No, I'm just playing with you. Coach Mike Jones, what's going on? Man, and y'all know who it is. It's your auntie's favorite Lions content creator, man. The ladies pet the men's regret. You ain't seen nothing yet. That biggest player. From Yak Town, LL Cool Torrance. What's going on, my dude? Hi, it's player. What's happening, everybody? Happy Wednesday. Man, y'all know what it is. It's hump day, baby. Man, on today's show, man, we like I said, man, we're going to talk about that thing, about the Lions Super Bowl run. But if it's your first time watching the channel, this is how our show works. We look at Detroit Lions news, headlines, or takes. If we agree, we say they are bossed up. If we disagree, we say they are balled on. We give our takes on why we agree or disagree. No hot takes here, like we're going to discuss today, because there's some hot takes out there about the Lions. Just natural debate uh, and our true thoughts and opinions about what's going on with our favorite team, the Detroit Lions. Just a bit of a, you know, a little note. Uh, the Lions have acted, chose to activate Broderick Martin uh, off the IR. His 21-day window will ex expire today, or excuse me, yesterday, but um, he's back on the active roster. And if he went back on IR yesterday, he had to come off one day to restart his clock. If he didn't do, they didn't do that. He would be, it would be season ending for him. So they want to send him out at least four more games. So they had to restart his clock. So they did that yesterday as well. So, all right. Whew, some things to talk about today, but first things first, man, let's look at what we're going to talk about today. Who or what can stop the Lions Super Bowl run? And then. Having the best OC in DC comes with a price, man. We got some problems with, on the, on the horizon when yeah. it comes to those OC and DC. And then the Lions versus the mainstream media. I mean, like probably gonna mix some local media in here as well, because you know they they fit the bill, man. They they, they ain't some of them cats ain't, ain't ain't right either. So you know, what I'm saying I'll mix some of them them cats in here, man, because you know some of them dudes is pissing me off. But <laughs> let's get into. What's going on with the Lions and who or what can stop their Super Bowl run? Because right now, they own a, they own the run. They own a Super Bowl campaign right now. Um, at nine and one, the Lions have the highest scoring offense in the NFL and one of the top ranked defenses in the NFL. So it's time to ask the question: Who or what can stop the Lions Super Bowl run? The Lions have three have lost three team captains <laughs> to injured reserve. They lost all pro uh, special teamer and good depth linebacker Jalen Reese Maven. Also lost their best coverage linebacker Asa Anzalone and Aiden Hutchinson, who was on his way to being a defensive player of the year. The dude is still one of the top guys in the league uh, at at sacks, and he hasn't played in weeks. Like it's crazy. Um, then they also lost the start linebacker, um, Derek Barnes, defensive end, Marcus Davenport, the injury, and the Lions haven't skipped the beat. They're still uh, the top seed in the NFC uh, right now. Nine and one, top seed in the North, top seed in the NFC. But, however, hmm, there are two players that I believe that the Lions cannot afford to lose to injury. That would definitely hamper their Super Bowl run. One, Jared Goff. And I don't know. Pen Penne Sewell. <laughs> Penny Hooker has did not have the knowledge and the control of the offense to take the Lions to the chip. It's just you know, plain and simple. I like Kenny Hooker. He's a developing young quarterback, man, but he ain't ready to do going on a Super Bowl run at, at a starting quarterback in the league. This ain't. It just is what it is. He doesn't have the command of the offense. He doesn't have the reps as a starter to have command of the offense like Jared Goff has. And Jared Goff's been in this system for, you know, three years. Um, and really, this has been really one season where he's had a, you know, a healthy season for Henry Hooker. And then Penny Sewell is the best tackle 
in football. No ifs, no ands, or buts. Right tackle, left tackle. He's the best tackle in football. There, we don't have a like when Taylor Decker went down, yeah, it hurt us for a minute, but there's no other tack, uh, a, a tackle or a l- offensive lineman that can do what Penn A. Sewell does on our roster. There's not another guy that can, there's not another guy that can come in and do what he does. It just isn't. Um, but you look at that, injuries could could be uh, that injury to two, two, those two guys can derail the Lions Super Bowl champion uh, odds. Again, then we, there was two teams, and you saw it on the thumbnail, that have been mentioned uh, by national pundits about who can stop the Lions from winning the NFC. And first was division rival Minnesota. Now they have a good front seven, but that's secondary <coughs> and slow and old. Mm-hmm. And what? Okay, Sam Darnold, who is known as LL Pumpkinhead. He is constantly turning the ball over this season. We know Jared Goff had that five interception game, but before that, and between that first couple of games of the year and that last game against the game against the Texans, he hadn't turned the ball over. And you see what he did last week. Um, the Vikings are one of those. Te- I, this reminds me of that season they had a couple of years ago where they were just winning. They had a good record, but they were just squeaking by games. This 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 team reminds me of that that team where they're one game behind the lines at eight and two, but like. You look at some of the some of their their games, it's, it's still suspect. They're, they're as much pressure as they get on the on the on the quarterback and turnovers that they cause, they give the ball up too. Uh, the last game at Four Field uh, of the season could be for the number one seed in the NFC and the NFL because right now uh, it's going to be some tough sledding for both the Bills and the Chiefs going down and. You know, I I don't know if if those guys will be able to have the type of record if if the Lions continue to play the day, the way that they they have. Um, I'm not scared of the Vikings right now, and, and we beat them in their house, and we're gonna we're gonna motor boat, we're gonna we're gonna boat race their ass, excuse me, <laughs> and, uh, when they come to Detroit at the last game of the season. Uh, it's gonna be a point. It's gonna be a point to prove uh, for the Lions that you guys should we. We gave you, we let the game get a little too close because if not for that fumble, the Lions would have ran away with that game. No ifs, no ands, but because they were in, they were in total control of that game when that fumble happened. Uh, and I I hated it for, um, for, uh, for Knuckles. And then the second team is Philadelphia, right? We were talking about Philadelphia, and I can't say that they haven't playing well, they are playing well because they're eight and two. However, they got four games coming up that's going to make or break their season. This weekend they play the Rams, they play the Steelers, the Ravens, and the Commanders again. Mm. That's a tough schedule at the end of their season. If they can survive these games, I may consider them a threat right now. But right now, uh, I think the Lions will beat the Eagles. And ironically, I ran into an Eagles fan the other day in Walmart down here, and he was like, I don't want to play you guys. Mm. <laughs> he said straight up, he said, I want to play you guys, man. You guys, you guys been 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 putting the you know, belt to ass. We've been, <laughs> we've been doing that thing, man. Um, at this point, for myself, right? For all that being said, I think there's only one team that can stop the Lions from winning, going to the Super Bowl, and that's the Lions. And I don't think that will happen. Dan Campbell and his staff won't let that happen. Um, and even with the leaders on the team, um, I'm not afraid to say it, man. I think the Lions, and I believe, not, no, I'm not, I think, I believe the Lions will be in New Orleans in February for the Super Bowl and not visiting just to go watch the game. They'll be playing in February in New Orleans. All right. So what do you guys think? I got think? 100 on it. What do you, what do you, <laughs> who or what do you think can stop the Lions from winning the Super Bowl or going to the Super Bowl run? Excuse me. What do you think can, can stop them from making the Super Bowl this year? Uh, I'll, let, uh, I'll let you go first, LL. Oh no, you gonna you gonna you gotta you gotta you gotta, yeah. you gotta coach. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, I think two of those things actually, um, not themselves. The Lions won't stop themselves. This that's that's old Lions. That's that's not even a factor. Um, injuries, injuries. Uh, as we as we seen, it, it, it can be next man up, and we we all know that. But for certain people, that next man up don't work. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, that. And if somehow we end up dropping some games and we got to go to Philly uh, in January um, and then it'd be like the end of January, um, 
that 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 could be a tough game depending on the weather conditions. Um, so that you know, those those are the only two things. So I agree with you, a ball stuff. Um, but yeah, but on themselves, I don't, the Lions are not stopping. They're they're not stopping themselves. They're not they're not stepping on their foot. This 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 is that's that's out of the question. It'd be going to Philly if we have to go to Philly in, in the end of January or his injuries. So, all right, what you got, LL? Um, well, I can I know it was separated, but I kind of think of injuries in themselves as the same thing, and that's uh, that's pretty much it. I like our chances against anybody that's playing football right now. So, put whatever uh, superlatives and fancy words behind mm-hmm. that part. But that's how I feel about that. So um, that's just outside threats. But you know, injuries and well, I do. I got a, I got another outside threat. Um, they used to plague us for years when we had less success, and you know, might have some people might have felt like that kept us from reaching a certain level of success. And that's them refs. So you know, we've seen um, you know officiating go however kind of ways, and you know, regular season games, playoffs games, whatever it is. So you know, that's the that's one of the factors that I lump in here as well because you know it might just you know count you know let's say i don't even want to say i don't even put no because for some strange you know the words have power that's all i say i don't even want to mm-hmm. put no specific thing because i think we'll see it but it could be any old thing start you know bring back another thousand year old rule it's the it's the goat rule you know if, if you fumble it and pick it up and fall backwards you have to have a goat on the field for it to be a turnover and then it's gonna be like we don't get the ball back or some crazy stuff so you know just something <laughs> crazy like that so uh-huh. that's what i thought i'm you what if they if if that does happen, them refs will have to be Secret Service up out of here. Mm. That's not they're, they're not I, going they're I, not going to walk up out of here. I, I would say this: the Lions have been I, playing so well that the the refs aren't really a factor. <laughs> I mean, that's you know that like they Sorry, they're refs. making he don't it, mean that refs he don't it, mean that they, refs they're making it where the refs aren't even a factor. Yeah, I, no, I'm saying the refs aren't a their refs are aren't a factor right now because of how the Lions are playing. Like they're they're taking that equation out. Of the you know that that problem out of the equation is the refs. They, right. they, they're playing it. They they playing so well that they, you can't leave it up to the refs. Like I think that's one of the, and that's one of the things that Coach Campbell will preach. Like yeah. we're gonna we're gonna play so well that there's no we don't we're gonna leave that factor out of the game. We we're not gonna make them yeah. have them part of the equation for our wins. Hey, but like the video, share the video, comment on the video. All these things help us get this content to more Detroit Lions fans just like yourself, man. Um, Memberships, we will have some membership coming up. Uh, you know, uh, ha- have you come a member of the the actual Boss Up All Out family, man? So you know, keep checking your um, your social medias and stuff like that. We'll have some information coming out here soon. All right, so, but with all the success comes problems. But they say more money, more problems. And Coach Jones got a big got a problem that may be coming up for the Lions here in the near future. Problem. What you got, Coach Jones? So. I mean, if you haven't been watching football or you just tuned in or maybe you just a little slow to the game, we have the best offensive and defensive coordinator in football, okay? Um, the I mean, it's just not even close. Ben Johnson and Aaron Glenn are those guys. Uh, they have the number one offense and the number five defense in the NFL. I mean, what can you say, man? But with that, Ah, <sighs> comes a little something, man. And, uh, you know, both of them might leave. But if you could only pick one, I'm, I'm going to go through these scenarios and then y'all give me your rundown. Which coordinator do you think will leave first? Uh, Aaron Glenn or Ben Johnson? And then next, I want you to answer, who will be their replacement? If, if one leaves, who's replacing them? And uh, do you think that side of the ball will be less productive, stay the same, or be more productive um, next year? So I know it. I know it, it seems like it's a long ways away, but it won't be a long ways away when it happens. <laughs> it's gonna be like, oh no, oh lord, oh sweet Jesus. But so uh, you know, um. Ooh, that's that's tough, man. Uh, Cause there's some teams on the horizon who they looking they they successful and they looking like we just had a coach. Uh, you know what I'm saying? And and they they gonna be trying to trying to pluck our coaches, man. So running down, man. Who do you think is gonna leave? Who's their replacement? Do you think that side of the ball will be worse? They're the same or be better? It's on y'all. All right. So I'll go first, just because of the fact that 
I'm pushing the button today. All right. I think AG. <laughs> I think AG would be the first to leave. He I, and the reason why I say that, I think he has the biggest aspiration right now to be a head coach. Um, ben Johnson is searching for that right scenario for him, that right fit, and he wants and will give him everything he wants to do as a head coach. However, if the last couple of seasons haven't told you this, I'm not sure Johnson wants to leave Detroit right now to be a head coach. I just don't. I don't, I don't know. I don't think he's thinks he's mature enough in the game yet to be a head coach. Um, and you see with some of the people that have gone out there and just kind of those young guys that go out there and fail and, you know, be a coach for a year or, or half a season or whatever it is and get fired. You look at some of the guys been fired 10 games to their first season. Um, but I think AG is, is going to be the leading candidate to get that Saints job. Uh, they love him down there, and I think he loves them. Um, I think the guy we got on the staff right now, the, our defensive line coach, Tara Williams, will be a clear choice to take uh, the defensive coordinator spot. And mm. I think that the team will be, with the guys he keeps around him, I think he will be a prime candidate, and I think that he will be able to be successful as the Lions' defensive coordinator. I don't think he will, a lot will change with him being the defensive coordinator. So, um, that's my guy. That's my pick. I think AG leaves first, and I think uh, Terry Williams would be the first guy to be the guy to replace him. Um, if not him, maybe Kelvin Shepard. But both well, those guys are kind of young. But yeah. But the thing with Johnson is that I just don't think he's. I don't think he thinks he's ready to be a head coach, and that's why he kind of like. Uh, I want. I want. And I think he's comfortable in his role in Detroit. And just because you're a, a coordinator, don't mean you don't mean you want to be a head coach. Right. All right. You know, and, and you think about this a couple of years ago, he was a tight ends coach. Right. Like he like he was a positions coach for a while. I mean, we know he played quarterback at, at Carolina and, you know, smart dude. But I think he's enjoying what he's doing right now. And I think that's one of the reason why he doesn't want to leave Detroit. I, I don't think he's in a hurry to leave the Motor City. What you got, LL? Um, well, I think a lot of stuff, but um, just on, I think I think the different I think is flip flop um, from what you just said, Kurt. But um, I think it kind of depends on which jobs is available. Of course, I don't think either wants to go to a terrible situation like Carolina or um, you know I don't know who and the, the Raiders maybe I don't just where uh, or the Jets where it kind of seems like you know the organization is is really, really bad. Um, you had said that AG might go to the Saints. Um, I think that would be their dream, but, you know, they got a lot of stuff going on. They got an old defense. They got, they don't have, you know, they got a terrible quarterback. Well, in my opinion, a terrible quarterback. And, you know, they ain't cap hell, but they always seem to be in cap hell. So I don't really know what that means. So, but um, I, I, this is where uh, I, I call me crazy, but I believe AG when he said he wanted to stay here long term and become the greatest defensive coordinator, whatever he had said at that time um, in Detroit. I truly believe that. I believe that they've taken um, the steps to kind of make that the thing. Of course, he could leave tomorrow and I'd be shocked, but or I wouldn't be shocked, but, um, you know, I just kind of believe that, you know, they've they they they've taken the steps, you know, with the drafting process, some of the development that they've done. Um, you know, they didn't uh, make some brash moves. Like they didn't jump out there and try to really – well, I don't know what they tried to do, but they didn't jump out there and get – you know, a bigger name and some stuff like that. You know, they, they've got pieces to go for, you know, whatever we're going to end up doing. So, um, you know, that's – I don't know if AG will leave. Um, ben Johnson, I don't want Ben Johnson to leave um, because I believe if he leaves, he'll take more with him. He'll probably take some front office guys. He might take – uh, you know, I don't know the, the gentleman's name, but it's the uh, the name or that they talking about him now is maybe a possibly a possible replacement. That's the current tight ends coach. I don't know the gentleman's name, but I feel like that kind of stuff might happen. He might start plucking more people than I would want to leave. Um, and I think that he might just stay, you know, if he, if he's smart or I think he do, I think he would take those if he's smart, but I think he would stay if he's a little bit smarter, but um, the end all, uh, I believe that big Sheezy and, uh, and that's Sheila. So miss big Sheezy. I think that she uh pay both of them to stay. That's what I truly believe in the end. I think she's going to pony up that cash and both of them to stay because well, I, I don't really understand that. It's like, oh, I'm so good. I just want to go and not be good no more. I want to go, I guess, have my shot at it. But, you know, you could just if we were to win, you could probably keep on winning. Yeah. I think the the big the biggest name that 
was the threat of leaving with Ben Johnson last season was Hank Fraley. That was the big. That was the that was the big name that was that was that was skated as far as leaving with Ben Johnson. But hopefully if we can keep whatever, both of them. But <laughs> I was gonna say whatever coach leaves is taking coach with him. So like if if um, Ben Johnson leaves, probably Hank Fraley, maybe Antoine Winder, or some somebody's leaving with him. Or if it's Aaron Glenn, and maybe uh, you know maybe it's Shep go with him, or maybe. Uh, you know, Terrell, I mean, he might take somebody, shit, you know what I'm saying? Somebody's going to leave with them. So, I mean, that's just what it is. You're going to be a positional coach. You're going to be a coordinator. It's like, like the check. If they cut the check for a uh, coordinator to come to head coach, they leave them, bro. If they, if they yeah. get like, they can, they can get offered more than Dan Campbell money and they're going to leave. So I'm just I, was, uh, I was watching, I was watching a PFF show the other day, yesterday morning. And they were saying that if Ben Johnson leaves, he would probably be the highest paid coach in the league next year. Yeah. Because they, they said that, that any team team would throw any amount of money at Ben Johnson for doing him to be the head coach next season. But yeah. and I like Jets, man. The Jets, the Jets from County right the now. Jets, they, they the, got a the Jets roster. the Jets are 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 a freaking uh a rolling a rolling pile of hot garbage trash on but fire. They have the most count. <laughs> I got, I got, I got a good uh, analogy for you because I know what you want to say. Oh, they got right. the most talent. They got this. They got that. Oh, it's oh, it's probably a bad analogy. Now I'm thinking about it. It's like the finest girl you ever seen, and then you find out her dad is Dwayne Wade. That's the cleanest way I'm gonna say it. Then you find out her dad is Dwayne Wade. You're like, oh my goodness. So yeah, uh, <laughs> you know, take that how you want to. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I think about the Jets. That they dad yeah, is Dwayne so Wade. Much. All right, man. Hey, we gotta move on. Next segment, man. Uh, because LL got something to talk about, and we took up talk about this media, man. Because you know, it's it's some it was a it was a nasty take the other day on uh on Fox Sports. But what you got, my man? Um, yeah, uh, I'm gonna try and keep it quick because I see you know what what where we at in time. But you know, sometimes I just like to revisit things. This ain't my first time talking about the Lions versus what at whatever kind of media that's out there, good, bad, or otherwise. So. Um, you know, uh, the good is, you know, we are receiving recognition. You have people, you know, saying nice, positive things. Some people have good sense and it all sounds good. Um, the real fans like ourselves here and the many others, of course, um, you know, are getting to enjoy this time. We get to gloat and, you know, say the, all the things we've been wanting to say about a good team for years. And, um, you know, currently we are the betting favorite over there on uh, um, Super Bowl betting favorite. Um, over there at Caesars or something like that, right? Or I don't know, it might be more than uh, more betting books. Um, so the bad is not necessarily bad, but you will see in just a couple seconds, um, people are saying stupid stuff. Um, like we need to lose, uh, like a loss would help us in some kind of way. You people shut up. Um, one thing um, that I that I do trust is that uh, when that's they, they got a lot of reasons why you know oh we gotta we we don't want to peak too early but I don't know about peaking and all that kind of stuff but I do believe one thing that I do trust is Dan Campbell to keep his foot on that pedal and you know just keep that engine running man. Um, let's see here uh, where's the and um, stupid Lions fans, you know, just for years, you know, all of the ones that that, that you might hear talking about, they were Lions fans always saying they are going to a Super Bowl. It's like nobody said that, you know, we, we, you know, a lot of people with good sense, you know, let's say, for example, 2021, nobody was saying Super Bowl in 2021, but, you know, it's just people are just able to say whatever they want now for whatever reason. We're going to go 17 uh, no next year. We're going to beat the Chiefs. This is the new Lions dynasty, whatever. Have your confidence, but don't be no dummy. And then uh, finally, last but not least, of course, you know, you just get the, the Nick Wright of it all. I don't even know what all he said. But it's more so the why, and here's why. You know, it's the I'd look at it as almost like the old, uh, you'll like this, Coach Mike, because battle rap and all that kind of stuff, but more so just the 50 Cent of it all. You know, 50 Cent and Eminem and all of them, they had a, a, a formula back in the day. They attacked the number one artists. Everybody talked about Eminem and such a great battle rap and all this other stuff. Eminem battle, Fred Durst, Christina Aguilera, Britney Spears, and all that kind of stuff, the number ones on the pop charts. A lot of people got, you know, lost on that because you want their spot. You get them talking about you, you get them looking at you, now you have all the attention. So that's what I believe about Nick Brown. I don't believe one thing that that, uh, you know, frog face wig wearing, 
Lord Farquaad, mm-hmm. he and Edge Boy said, I mean, uh, you know, all that stuff. He, he, he just, <laughs> just a terrible person. I don't believe nothing. I don't care about nothing that he said, but it's just the fact right. that he's saying it. He's trying to push our buttons. You see that everywhere we go, you know, on the planes, yelling at people, we in the stands, yelling at people, we turn every road game into a, a home game. Everybody mm-hmm. keeps saying that we go into your trap and take over your trap. He just wants some of that. He wants some attention on us. That's all. On him. And then he wants some of our attention on him. That's all. So, Nick Wright, you can just shut up forever. But what do you guys think about all of that stuff? Yeah, for real. Um, my thing is the national media most have been positive, like you said, man. There are a few individuals that still want to see more, and I can understand that. You know, people still haven't, you know, quite come to the grips, come to grips that the Lions are good. Um, Nick Wright is a Chiefs homer. Um, and he had the worst Garrett Goff take of the season, man. And, and here's like you said, and here's one other thing. He's getting to that Skip Bayless and Stephen A area where he's just saying something for shock factor. I don't think he even believes that at all. Right. I, I I just think he did that for, to re, for reaction. My guy that I'm kind of pissed off is Matt Duray from the Locked On Lions podcast. Now that's this a stupid guy, Lions fan I'm talking about too. Piss me off with this saying the J Mo Act is getting old. Uh, he could have cracked his skull driving into the end zone, uh, do, doing the beast mode celebration. Stop playing with me, man. <laughs> Wait. Here's my thing. Waymo is not afraid to be himself. He's comfortable in his own skin. If you go read the go read the article about Jameson Williams, uh, written by Dave Burkett over there at the Detroit Free Press, and you'll see who Jameson Williams is. He is going to be who he is. He visits area of Detroit that reminds him of St. Louis, where he's from. He grew up in a rough neighborhood, and he visits the hood. He goes over there on Six Mile. He goes to hit all his. He goes where he's comfortable in Detroit, and he's not afraid to say it. And then here's my thing: you want you want to be tired of his act? What about after the game on Sunday when he and Kirby gave out turkeys to family in need in Detroit? You sick of that act? Other players celebrated Sunday. St. Brown was 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 smacking was smacking ass and all the other stuff out there on the field. <laughs> are you are you afraid of his act? He did the he did the 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 um the whatever the high ill kick or the whatever the, the where he jumped backwards was he afraid he's gonna oh, yeah. crack his skull? Dragon Ball Z. Right. Monty did the Pee Wee Herman. Are you? <laughs> here's my thing. Just just say what you want to say, dude. Just don't. Just say what you just say what you gonna say. If you don't like JMO and you don't like JMO because of who he is or what he is or what he looks like, just say that, Matt. But don't 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 come up there with that. You tired of his act crap? That's just me. Yeah, I'm you can you. kick you you can yeah. kick rocks with that one. What you got, with, Coach? Jones? With no sign. Uh, yeah, you know what? Uh, Matt Derry has uh, Tia Don's Trump talk at two o'clock every day. Um, oh wow! You know what? Um, I I agree. I agree with that, man. Um, you know, people like especially Nick, Nick Wright. He just he just shopping because. Is is for the shock factor. Is for the what will turn heads. Because when you're a writer and things like that, you got to have that aspect. Even though you don't want to, sometimes you got to bring attention to yourself. And the most talked about attention thing in football right now is the Detroit Lions. But yeah, he he's just trying to you know he's trying to just get in get in everybody's uh in everybody's thoughts, man. Get people responding replies. He went to clickbait the views, all that man. He ain't he ain't nobody. Yeah. And, and my thing is, um, first rule of journalism is do not make yourself part of the story. That's the first rule of journalism. As as a journalist or as a person in the media, you never make yourself part of the story. You always let the let the story uh be the focus. And right now, you're saying that too many times right now with what these, what's going on and the type of media and traditional media and then and new media that, that we're doing right here with content creation. But hey, like the video, share the video, comment on the video. All these help us get this content to more Detroit Lions fans just like yourself. If you haven't done so already, please follow the crew on your favorite social media platforms. My man, Coach Jones, he got some great stuff going over there on the Wolf Alliance Sports Talk YouTube channel. Uh, I post content from this channel on all of my social media platforms. And make sure you check out my man, LL Cool Torrance, man, because you know what tomorrow is. It's Thursday, Thursdays over on LL's Instagram, man. So make sure you check them out to see what's going on on a special, man, Colts edition of the, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Thursday, Thursdays, man. 
And uh, the Colts be wearing their Indiana Knights jerseys with the black helmets and the blue uniforms. So, you know, we're going to be rocking them marshmallows on Sunday, man. You know, you know, we know what we're going to do. But, hey, time for Party Shots for the Day show. What you got for the people on this hump day, baby, Coach Jones? Uh, yeah, man. So, I, I, I attend church regularly on Sundays, man. And uh, my pastor is uh, – born and and raised in indiana he's a colts fan you're gonna get yours this weekend bro i love you <laughs> <laughs> that's all i got let the church and let the church say amen all right what you got amend, amend. <laughs> coach mike i ain't know where you was about to go with that when you was like he used to be from indiana i ain't know what you was about to start saying but you know um happy wednesday Everybody, um, you know, beat the Colts, of course, and um, Coach Mike Pastor. Don't take it personal. That's one thing. I uh, I think it was a Chris Long on podcast. I like the thing that they said because everybody yeah. got something to say about how we, you know, what uh, the games, how they go. I ain't gonna go yeah. into specifics, but he's, you know, uh, they don't. We, we don't take it personal. We just hate everybody. So you yeah, know, yeah. That, Coach uh, Mike Pastor, Pastor, two uh, my brother. Yeah. Pa- pastor, uh, pastor, uh, from Mike, um, you know, don't take it personal. We just we don't whoop on everybody, man. I watched that show this morning. Yeah, don't take it personal. We hate everybody. Hey, thank you for joining us right here and starting your work there out on this hump day, baby, with the Boss Up Ball Up podcast. Your home for a gang debate about Detroit Lions news and rumors. Enjoy your day at work. If you're having a good day, say a kind word to someone. Spread that joy. If you're not having a good day, man, don't steal no one else's joy. You know, don't be that guy or that girl. But. Hey, do you make her still a favor? Whatever you do in life, you got to boss up. Ball out and be the best version of you that you can be. For my fellas, LL Cool Torrance and Coach Mike Jones, this is Kurt Steele, and we will holler at you real soon.